welcome a lot. Jens, thank you for um, your insights you will give in a second. Mm -hmm. so Jens is really one of the deep um, IT guys looking for sustainability for data, working at Cisco for a couple of years, a couple of startup companies you have um, uh, you have developed, so you really know from the scratch what it means to deal with data, and also where there may be possible conflicts with the normal real estate industry, with the startups, with the IT uh, perspective. So I really like to welcome you, Jens, for your presentation. Thank you very much, Michael. And my, my, my only problem is I have no idea about the real estate industry. So but <laughs> we, are, we are trying to close that gap. No, no, thanks. And I, I'm going to start the, the technology part of the session, trying to be fast to give uh, uh, some time and room for Henriette later, who, who would help us to drive the technology part home. Um, and the headline is why, why sustainability builds on digitization. Uh, I probably would take it fur further. Why is sustainability or at least reaching the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the targets actually is dependent on, on digitization. And uh, we always link it to the, to the COVID-19 crisis. And uh, at the end of the day, in, in both scenarios, the, the name of the game is flattening the curve. And how do we do that, right? And probably the only way of doing it is to, to correlate data. Um, and we need to build the technology for that because um, I'm, I'm always uh, trying to quote uh, Roger Baumann, Excel is not an option. So we cannot do it based on Excel sheets because there are just too many variables uh, in the game here. And if you can go to the next slide, please, where I will at least try to build a link to what um, Rebecca just discussed with us so where would the east connect so um, ecological economical um, uh, data and targets and uh, it seems the finance industry starts to to act on that right we have a lot of pledges Rocher mentioned some uh, and it also looks like that uh, sustainability investments start to outperform traditional investments and I'm I fully agree to, to Rebecca, we can only solve it based on our economical system. So capitalism needs to help us solve the problem because otherwise we, we, we have no resources to pay for it. But it seems there is, a, um, there is a move already. So the big ones made their pledges. And uh, what I also think I, I, I can see in the industry right now is the, the very long uh, product cycles of the real estate industry start to merge with the much shorter product cycles of the financial industry. So financial industry starts to anticipate the changes and uh, hopefully in the future uh, nobody wants to invest anymore in intransparent buildings and probably nobody wants to invest uh, in foreseeable stranded assets, let's, let's put it this way. And that I hope helps to uh, try us in the right direction. And if you want to go to the next one, please. Um, yes, the, the, the real, estate, real estate industry is slow and it was always slow when it comes to digital transformation. Uh, so um, is it the first mover market? Yes, it's the first mover market for uh, lighthouse customers like Zurich Insurance or the Asset Owner Alliance, etc. For all the other, that looks more like a, a last mover market, right? So, but we need to help those lighthouses to, to cross the chasm here. So the early adopters needs to help us to, to overcome the challenge and hopefully sooner or later, uh, again, nobody wants to, to invest in, in transparent assets anymore. And if you want to go to the next one, please. Uh, and we have seen it from, from Roche already. Um, uh, we, we believe it's serious now because we have big global brands, both in finance industry, technology industry, et cetera, et cetera, uh, setting the path and setting the scene. And uh, that usually leads to a an, to an trend, uh, to a massive move in, in, into the right direction. We believe into that. That's our job, by the way, because we're on a mission. Uh, but uh, we, we can see those changes in the marketplace right now. Next one, please. Um, nevertheless, we are also a little bit concerned in terms of timing because um, we have 
um, targets and uh, the, 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 the biggest shortcoming of the human race is we, we, we don't understand the, uh, the exponential function. So there is not much time and it runs exponentially in terms of, of climate change. Um, while we just have seen it or still seeing it with the, with the COVID-19 development. So we don't understand the exponential function. We are running into that like break even scenarios um, pretty soon. And we want to make sure we reach a positive break, break even, not a negative break even. Nevertheless, and if you just click uh, once, Michael, please, and that's a little bit provocative. Um, we, 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 not, we, we don't only see a stranded asset scenario in terms of uh, assets that might not meet the, need the targets anymore. We also see a little bit an action taking resilience that, that leads us to a stranded action taking um, situation. And that probably has to do with, with generations. And yes, uh, I'm, I'm, I belong to that generation, uh, which uh, if, you, if you look at the average um, uh, sea level situations around us, which actually are here to make decisions, uh, but sometimes it seems um, it's it's uh, like like the, the German saying nach mir die Sintflut literally right because um, there is a is a nice quote of of Bob, Bob Hoffman uh, and he observed once you cannot be proven wrong provided you kick uh, the can as far as possible in the future and that's a little bit the scenario we are facing right now um, let's avoid to belong to the stranded action taking gang herd, however you want to call it. So it's necessary that we face the truth uh, and take actions now. Go to the next one, please. And um, yes, it's, it's, it's pretty much ob obvious how much time we would have in order to like change the game. Uh, and we are now in the phases between 2017, 2050. So we need to like close that gap and bridge that gap in terms of uh, sustainability targets, sustainability measures, because otherwise very obvious it would be too late. And the question is, how do we do that? And um, um, then and go to the next one, please. Technology comes into the play. And that's what we are taking care about right now with, uh, with our platforms. There might be other platforms around as well. We are trying to leverage technology available and probably five years or 10 years from now, um, it would have been impossible to process that amounts of data, um, also target, targeting to like um, overcome the, the digital silos we have in our industry. Now it's possible and uh, uh, we will hear more from Microsoft. We are building our platform based on Microsoft technology that gives us the flexibility and uh, technology advantage in order to to like start that journey and correlate massive amounts of data uh, in order to make the future models even possible um, and we, we are also doing that based on our, our data initiatives we are running with um, also the members of the call here um, in order to make sure we can apply deep tech to the industry so deep tech with all his facets, starting with artificial intelligence, robotics, blockchain, advanced material science, science et cetera. We want to bring it together on one, one platform in order to process all the necessary data uh, to, to run the models and uh, make it even possible to, uh, to correlate all those uh, massive variables. Uh, go to the next one, please. Um, and yes, it has to do with standards because we need uh, reports, cockpits, and insights in order to make um, educated decisions, uh, particularly on that uh, very complex journey. And we need to run scenarios. Uh, if we imagine the big um, uh, global portfolios and, and circuit insurance might be just one example, what is necessary in, in order to apply technologies on the model we don't even know about so technology comes in our direction and we need to develop models to uh, run as if uh, scenarios. So if new materials comes into play, new technology comes into play, 
um, what would it mean if I upgrade my portfolio and how would, how would it contribute to my carbon footprint? And then we need to run the next iteration, what, what, what would happen if we do it? So do go to the next one, please. And that's how we see the world. And that's a very, very, very simplified picture. Um, that's what we want to do. So we want to be able to run benchmarks on every level, portfolio level in this case, in order to find the outliers. And that ideally are positive ones, could be negative ones as well. Uh, process the data, uh, go to the action level on, on physics level, on building level. And here we really need to fuse uh, physical and digital and go to the next iteration. And that's, that's how you, you can imagine that requires big, uh, big capacities when it comes to, to platform technology and data process, processing technology. Uh, but that for us is the only way to like, uh, 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 fix fix the problem, solve the equation, and uh, we want to develop that that fuzzy logic um, iteration technology that it really helps us uh, to apply benchmarks, maybe positive, maybe negative. Uh, so we want to develop the positive benchmarks and and overcome the negative benchmarks um, in the equation here. Go to the next one, please. Yeah, like a, a simple um, explanation of our journey and where we want to end up. Yes, uh, if, if we go to the upper uh, uh, right-hand corner, yes, we want to run AI-driven carbon risk models, if you will. Uh, but in order to do that, we need to go through all the, uh, the, the, the little steps. So we are building the integrated data foundation right now. Uh, we are able to run uh, the first couple of models already in order to um, um, show the visibility or develop the visibility for operational and, and uh, embodied carbon footprints. Uh, we want to combine it or we want to combine static and dynamic data. So it's very essential for us to run like the benchmarking models, but also manage the change on building level because that's the only way. Uh, Rebecca mentioned it earlier, uh, to change anything or to change something. Uh, but we also want to give uh, the, the foundation for educated decisions. Uh, and yes, all the technology which is available, um, IoT is mentioned here, of course, needs to be a part of the, of the platform in order to provide um, dynamic data to run through the next, through the next iteration. And um, when we come to the next slide, please, uh, it uh, leads us to uh, our, our common initiative here, uh, how, how we can develop a common data model for real estate and apply it. Um, and uh, most importantly, apply it because uh, we don't want to, to develop another the theoretical model. It needs to be practical and it needs to reflect the reality of life. And that's what, what we are trying to do. We build it step by step. Uh, we, we are not a big fan of, of big banks in terms of uh, we need to upgrade the entire platform because then it leads to the uh, shortcomings of the, of the second E. Nobody uh, would like to be able to pay for it. So that provides a step-by-step -step recipe, if you will. And um, um, we are happy if uh, professionals join us here on our journey, on our mission, uh, to, to, to make it happen. Um, and go to the last one, please, Michael. Um, for us, that turns into 10 steps to sustainability on, and digitalization at the same time. And uh, in the interest of time, I only want to, to, to pick three of them break the data silos, that's foundation. If you don't do that, all the, the other steps wouldn't, wouldn't work. Make transparency a business value driver. So the, the, really the value, also the commercial value of transparency, uh, we fundamentally believe that will kick in pretty soon. And yes, last but not least, the most important one, start now. So don't join the stranded action team. <laughs> join the 
uh, the team that uh, uh, pushes things forward. And, and for us, it always starts with, with a mindset. So it will only be possible if we change our mindsets. Thank you. Thank you, Jens, for your presentation. And you can imagine I have tons of questions for you. But <laughs> only very limited on time. So I have only one question for you right now. Yeah. And it's concerning your first point, breaks the data, uh, the data silos, silos, you were talking about data aggregation. How do you want to persuade all the different data owners in the real estate industry to give you the data? Well, um, <laughs> we, 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 we unleash data for them. So we don't want to necessarily get their data. We want to give them their data. Let's put it this way, because we, we want to extract data from buildings. We want to unleash it from the physical level. Uh, so we never want to own the data. Data belongs to the customer. That's a rule. And we have a huge discussion now who is owning which data. You said the data is owning to the customer, to the investor, to different. So how do you want to separate this function in building minds? Yeah, we have a pretty strict, straightforward um, data safety and security and authentication regime. Let's put it this way. Uh, it builds, by the way, on Microsoft technology. So to, to open the floor for, for any yet right now. And that regime needs to be very, very strict because we are talking to customers that who are regulated by, by the government, right? So if you, uh, if you are not able uh, to provide uh, 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 that particular level of data safety and security, uh, you cannot add value to that market. Thank you, Jens, for Welcome. your answer and also for the perfect introduction of Henriette. I'd like to welcome Henriette.